The surge in Asian hate crimes, often unreported in the past, are now being documented by surveillance cameras and eyewitnesses for all to see on social media. They range from petty insults and harassment to terrifying physical confrontations and assaults, often resulting in injuries, and in the case of several elderly victims, death. An elderly Asian man viciously kicked to the ground in San Francisco. Over the past year, San Francisco Bay Area television reporter Dion Lim has been covering this alarming local trend. And I think what happened in Atlanta was perhaps on a more national scale, a catalyst, an explosion, because it combined something like a mass shooting with the concept of hate and that hypersexualization of Asian American women. So I think that's why many see it as a turning point. The Oakland Police Department has also Shocking as the images and stories are of the recent surge in Asian hate crimes, it's not totally surprising to the people here in Oakland's Chinatown. California has the oldest and largest Asian community, and as such, a long tortured history of discrimination and harassment. Knowing the yellow peril history, that whenever a disease arrived from Asia, that Asians would be met with violence and with racist policies, we knew we had to document the racism we're experiencing. Russell Jung, professor of Asian American Studies at San Francisco State University, started the Stop Asian American Pacific Islanders Hate Crimes online tracking system in March 2020 at the start of the COVID crisis. Kung flu the Chinese virus. That's exactly when the same week President Trump began to use the term insistently on Chinese virus. So when we were flooded, we knew that um, that rhetoric was exacerbating. People asked, is there a surge? Well, in 2019, nobody was spitting and coughing on other people. Anti-Asian political rhetoric and the backlash it can promote isn't unique to recent political figures, according to UC Berkeley sociology professor Andy Barlow. Probably the classic example of it was the success of Ronald Reagan in uh, weaponizing anti-Japanese sentiments in the early 1980s uh, to explain the collapse of the manufacturing sector of the United States, which he argued was caused by Japanese unfair competition. In Detroit, a young man named Vincent Chin was uh, accosted outside a bar and killed by out-of-work white auto workers because they thought he was Japanese. He believes the recent China bashing over trade and defense issues is continuing this cultural demonizing for political advantage. I think the China bashing from government and politicians is probably the second primary source of the racism we're facing. You know, first is that perpetual foreigner yellow peril stereotype that we don't belong. The perfect storm of historical racism, current political rhetoric, and the rise in extremism has Asian communities here and across the country taking more security precautions. These volunteer street patrols in Oakland's Chinatown and GoFundMe campaigns for hiring private security are a reflection of the Asian community's frustration with local law enforcement's ability to stem the attacks. One of the challenges for the Asian community is when we migrate to places, we're often seen as perpetual foreigners, even if we might have been there for generations. As a South Asian, Arthi Kohli, executive director of Advancing Justice Asian Law Caucus, dealt with a similar surge in hate crimes against Muslims after 9-11. What we learned is that whenever that there is um, conflict with a foreign country and people think that Americans residing here come from that country, there is deep racism and animosity aimed at those communities. Her offices on the edge of San Francisco's Chinatown have also been targeted by extremist groups. Last year, the Patriot Front, which is a white supremacy group, um, actually tagged our office sign. The Bay Area is considered a very liberal, progressive place, but um, you don't have to go far to find a white supremacy group. I think there are two ways that racism is expressed in the United States. There's the clear white-black divide, 
there's a binary, but there's also that insider-outsider divide, that you're either really inside America or you're cast as not belonging, as an outsider. What Black Lives Matter did is it exposed the structural racism of the United States. Where are you from? I've been asked. And I said, I'm from San Jose. The modern minority myth that Asian Americans are successful, the myth that because we're hardworking and um, valuing education that we're more achieving, I think that myth has been really problematic. It masks the fact that we have the highest income inequality among any racial group. And then what it does too is it drives a wedge between us and other racial groups. It pits us because others might say, why can't you be like Asians who are successful? Just work hard and keep quiet. Hate is learned. You know, you don't come out of the womb hateful. You learn it along the way. And there are many messages in our society and stereotypes that we are teaching our children that we really have to pay attention to. Jeremy Lin on the reverse. After NBA basketball star Jeremy Lin was recently subjected to an Asian slur by another player during a game, he went public with it without naming names rather than remain silent. He also privately followed up with his offender with a one-on-one -on -one discussion on racism. I got to talk to the player um, directly, and we talked a lot about other things, and one of the things that stuck out the most to me was the, was the other player was like, hey, I didn't, I, like, I went online and I didn't realize how much was happening to the Asian American community. It's unlike anything else I have ever covered. Wildfires, shooting, nothing compares. And I feel myself getting emotional periodically at any time because unlike those situations, this is ongoing. It is constant and it is people who look like me. It is people who look like my mother and father, people that I care about. And they feel so helpless and they are looking to me because they see that I have a voice and I can help them. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Mike Saray reporting from the San Francisco Bay Area.